When we think of Chinese food, we think of General Tao chicken or chicken fried rice, but there's a whole other side to China's cuisine that we should discover. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. Today we'll be going beyond the Great Wall with Naomi Dugan. Why would you say that food and travel are so inextricably linked? Well, for us, I guess, there's travel, and once we're traveling, how do we understand a place? Food isn't what's on the plate, food's what grows. How do people deal with that? What's the climate? You know, and, and of course it's a connecting point. Your book refers to the other China. What does that include? It's actually a phrase our editor came up with. We weren't, we weren't in love with it to start with, but it was trying to explain that we weren't talking about the majority culture in China, which is Han Chinese and is an ancient and sort of brilliant civilization. We're talking about all the other cultures that are within the borders of the People's Republic of China. Why did you find it important to highlight this side of China's culture? I guess this word Chinese, it's sort of uh, ambiguous. If I say China, what do you think of? You think of Beijing and Shanghai and crowds of people and crowded streets and rice eating. And in fact, in this China we're talking about, in uh, Inner Mongolia, for example, where there's grasslands and not much agriculture, it's mostly animal food. So there's hot pots and, and meat. In the west, in the oases in Xinjiang, it's kind of like Turkish food because they're Turkic people. So there's flatbreads, there's kebabs. In Tibet, again, a high altitude place, more meat based, some vegetables as well, some simple stir fries, but mostly sort of simmered, sort of stew like things or soups. And then when you get to southern Yunnan, which is sort of southwest China, then you're talking really about Southeast Asian sort of palate. So there you finally get to rice. The interesting thing is that what you don't find in Chinese food is raw. Everything is always cooked. It's got to do with cleanliness, it's got to do with lots of things. And in some of these places, in these cultures, you do find raw. And it's sort of a welcome find. It's, I think, why people really gravitate to Southeast Asian food. What would you say would be kind of the most important thing you want to impart to your readers? The book is a, is a chronicle of change as well. We talk about how China sort of was in the 80s when we were first there and how it's changing. And of course those changes of prosperity and of growing economic disparity between the haves and the have-nots, that also means things for the people on the periphery. We can't be aware of everything, but it's good sometimes to expand our universe, our horizons a little. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.